Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here, and I've got an entire broadcast lined up for you today, uh, all about Hollywood, Real ID, and the latest on the movie that you guys know I'm going to be appearing in. It's starting to film, but that is with David Hevner's The Last Evangelist. So I wanted to bring him on and give us all the current updates uh, with all of that. So David, are you with me over there? Hey Lisa, I'm with you. How are you and how's everyone out there in Lisa land? <laughs> we're doing good over here. I'm excited because I know we're going to be starting filming the, the show in November and so much is going on in the news that ties along to what you're doing on The Last Evangelist. I'm like, I got to bring you on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm glad you did. It's good to be here. Well, first of all, we're going to start shooting November 17th and we're shooting at a big church in San Bernardino, California. We're, we're shooting two scenes. One is your scene, which I want to talk about your character. The other one is the big government church scene where everyone comes together to worship uh, the, the Antichrist, uh, the Mark of the Beast, which we're going to talk about later also. But, uh, and that's November 17th, but your scene, the character you're playing, Dr. Amy Adams. Now, I want to mention her, and then I want to talk a little bit about why I'm mentioning your character, which, by the way, Lisa, you're perfect to play this character. Who is Amy Adams? She's the gal that's the, uh, she represents the government and she's the conduit, she's the connection between the government and the people on, on not only getting them to take the chip, selling them on the chip, but also keeping them involved in the chip. In other words, keeping it up to date, come in for your monthly checkup. You're a doctor, but you're also part government. And uh, so that's the beginning of your character and it'll, be reoccurring. So I wanted to mention that to the audience, let them know what part you are playing. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a little bit of a bad guy, at least for now. Uh, it's an interesting little thing. I'm excited to play it in all reality. And the truth is, let's let's take what's happening in the world already. We already see the beginnings of the micro trip starting to take place. So I did a report a couple of, maybe like a couple weeks ago on Real ID. Do you think there's any links between Real ID and what we could see in the future with what's playing okay. out in the in the Mark of the Beast? Oh, good, good question, Lisa. So here it is. I'm sitting down with my script, Last Evangelist, because I'm trying to figure out how do I, in Last Evangelist, people end up taking the chip, right? And I'm trying to figure out how are they going to monitor everyone to take this chip? How's that going to happen? And boom, all of a sudden, uh, what is it? It's the Real Act, the Real ID Act 2020. You see, that's one step closer to this quote, mark of the beast, this chip, you know, whatever it, for people perceive it to be. So what it is, it's a monitoring device in order to keep corral people so when the time comes to lower the boom, that's what it's about. And I didn't have to write, I didn't have to come up any, uh, uh, all I had to do is look at the, what's happening in the news and come up with the, this government ID. and. So that's what is going to lead people into the chip. And I think, Lisa, people are not taking this serious. We're talking a year and a half from now. If you don't have a government ID, you basically won't be able to function in the United States as we know it. And well, I'm sure you're on board. Oh yeah, that real ID, uh, that what surrounds that is basically you cannot fly an airplane domestically without either your real ID or a passport. Your regular driver's license, your state issued license will not work. Or if you wanna go into federal billings. But crazy part is, never mind voting because you can still vote without a real ID. I mean, hey. <laughs> oh, hey, it's, it's interesting you brought that up. You wanna hear the list of things that you can do without, without this uh, government ID? Listen to this. You can enter federal facilities that do not require a person to present identification. Now that's, if they don't require a person, you can vote or register to vote without this identification. You can apply for receiving federal benefits. Uh, you can be in licensed by a state to drive, accessing healthcare or life uh, preserving services, participating in law enforcement proceedings or investigations. So I would say, about 80% uh, of what I just read applies to illegal aliens. What say you? In other words, if they're not legal in the first place, 
they're not going to be have an incentive to get this government id because they can still vote they can still get government services at least say here's my question what's behind this why is this not included in the rules and regulations for having that government id that's what we need to focus on because that's the answer because it has nothing to do with are you actually a citizen and do you follow the guidelines because if it were it would be required to vote it would be required for certain health care the list of things that you stated it would be treated as such but it is not what is happening is if if they were concerned now i would be against the thing either way but that's yeah. if they were concerned about immigration and having the proper uh guidelines for people but it's not because mass immigration is part of the agenda that's a topic for another day but the real agenda then is they want a national id system the state isn't good enough what they have at state they want a national id system and and the benefits of this real ID is that they actually include facial recognition technology. Now, people always say, well, they already have your picture on your driver's license. Yes, they do, but there's a difference, okay? So I'll give you an example of the difference. And when I read the details, this is what it says. If I go with my driver's license to an airport, they cannot, they don't see a picture of my face on their screen because my face isn't registered in a national database where they have your uh, biometrics, right? Um, so all they see is my name and they can verify me. But if I have the real ID, now my actual barometrics have been pushed in via this real ID facial recognition technology. Now when I go to the airport, they will literally have my face on the screen and my face on my ID card, on my real ID card to match it up. That is why the biometrics on your real ID are different than on your normal driver's license. So it's one step towards national ID, towards a global ID, which they want. This is according to Agenda 2030 and 16.9th Agenda. People can go 16.9 Agenda, it'll come up and they want a national ID, a global ID for all. Absolutely. Absolutely. In the last evangelist, I've got the borders collapsing between Mexico and the United States <clears throat> because I believe this is going toward a one world agenda. This is going to be a one world card, folks. It starts in America, but it'll bleed. You'll see in 20 years, if the Lord doesn't come back, you won't see any difference between Mexico and the United States. Now, they'll still have borders. But the reason, <clears throat> excuse me, they're not going after the illegal aliens. Number one, they need them. They need them for votes to keep this thing going, right? Yep. But number two is they know they're going to get them anyway because it's just a matter of flipping the switch and it goes global, right? <clears throat> but here's the question, Lisa, that I want your viewers and my audience and your audience to, to, to ask themselves. This is what's important, and this is the question of the last evangelist. At what point... Do we stop and say, this is worshiping the system of the beast instead of worshiping the system of God? Because here's what scripture clearly states. <clears throat> it says, if anybody worship the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead or on their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured out in full strength in, uh, into the cup of his wrath. So Lisa... And I'm not saying anyone that people should not take this, but is this the beginning of the mark? You know, Christians, should they look at this government ID, this this uh, real ID act of 2020 and go, wait a minute, this is not a God. This is a, the, the beast system. What say you? Well, here's what I have to say. I mean, people thought when we got our driver's license, that was the start of a mark of beast. And I could say kind of, yeah, it is. You have to take steps in that direction. Now, I'm not going to, um, I, I think, you know, whenever they start to insert in the hand or the forehead, I'm not doing that. You know, I'm not crossing that line or going anywhere near that line. Um, but I have a feeling in the very near future that they're going to do away with our driver's license altogether and force the real ID. We see that coming. And, you know, it's a scary thought. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it until I'm at that place where I'm forced to do it. Uh, and I don't even want to do it then. Uh, but I think it's a step in the ultimate goal of that direction. Not obviously not the mark itself, but a step in that direction. It, it, it absolutely is. But even when they come to you and they say, OK, Lisa, you've got to take this chip. They're not going to say to you take the chip and disown God. 
See, it doesn't work that way because people are going to go, well, hey, I want to go to heaven. I'm going to. No, no, it's a slow process. It's yeah. a slow process. All I'm saying in this, in this interview is I want the body of Christ to wake up. I want us to see what's going on around us. I want, I want us to be in, in hard, hard prayer about what's happening because we see this unfolding around us. And Lisa, it's happening very, very quickly. And as I'm shooting The Last Evangelist, which depicts everything we're talking about, it's almost, I need to get out and shoot it right away because it's happening before I'm shooting this stuff. You know, I want to shoot yeah. stuff and then it happened. I don't want it to happen that I'm shooting it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know. It's kind of scary how quick things are moving. I'm like, ah, you know, slow down a little bit, Lord. I'm not ready. <laughs> but, I, I, but we are, and we have to think about our children. Yeah. You have kids. I have kids. We're going to have grandkids. What are we going to, if, if the Lord doesn't come back, what are we going to leave for them? Okay, at some point, somebody has to stand up and say the emperor has no clothes. Okay, so all I'm saying is reading the scripture about taking the mark of the beast that we're drinking from God's wrath. What is the mark of the At what point does all of this oppression turn into the mark of the beast? You know, in, in Germany, if, if you go back and you study the Holocaust, which I have to a certain extent, you'll find it's repeating the same thing over again of what happened. Uh, val are your papers. Value your papers. First thing they want to do is gather everyone together, and then they want to document everybody so that you're accounted for. Okay, that, that's first step. Then the second step is then they want to put you on the train and haul you off to the FEMA camps. Okay, and I got more information on that in the next episode when we talk. Uh, some crazy stuff I've discovered through some of my investigations, I'm writing this stuff in Last Evangelist. So I'm going to talk to you about that next time we, we go on. Oh, yeah. But you're right, though. There are lots of t ch bone chilling, I guess, parallels with uh, what happened then. So it's good in which, you know, we can spend time in prayer and now is the time to get right with the Lord. Uh, but David, will you share more information on uh, where they can get the show, how to go about that, how they can donate, all of that as well? Yeah, thank, thanks, Lisa. Yeah, you can go to lastevangelist.com, sign the newsletter. Uh, if God leads you, you can donate. You can have a T-shirt. You can have a walk-on part. You can come and meet Lisa and me when we shoot. Or you, anytime we're shooting, come on the set. Um, God told me not to go to investors. Go to his people. That's what I've been doing. And people like Lisa and, and a few others have really been so kind and using their platform to help me. So askevangelist.com, it'll be aired on davidhevener.tv. God told me not to go to Netflix, start our own platform. And Lisa, you're on David Hevener TV. The shows have been going up on there. And this is where Last Evangelist will premiere. The network is growing, everyone. I mean, every day more people are signing up. Praise God for that, because it's the truth that needs to be spoken. And I want to encourage people to go to davidhevener.tv and subscribe. It's cheap. It's $3.99 a month. I agree. And time to break away from big, big brother Hollywood, big money, more or less, Hollywood. Yeah. They're, they're like all of it. Control, money, all of it. It's, it's a good thing. So I'm excited, David. Thank you. Hey, oh, you're welcome. You're and welcome. I just want to encourage you guys out there, make sure you check the links below. I'm going to include a, a description of everything he talked about. Uh, but we're going to be filming my portion on November 17th there in San Bernardino. So it'll be interesting and fun. And I'll keep you guys up to date on all that. And I encourage you sign that newsletter uh, so you can keep up to date with what's going on in the movie TV series. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven. And that was David Hevner signing out.